Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome everybody to this cabinet meeting. Uh, item one, apologies for absence. I have apologies from Councillor Marie Bailey and Councillor Jeremy Oates who are both sick. Uh, item two, minutes of previous meeting. Can I sign those as a true record? It's moved by Councillor Farrell, seconder. By Councillor Summers, all those in favour? That is carried, thank you very much. Declarations of interest? None. Item four, question time. There was one member of the question, sorry, one question from a member of the public from Mr. Loxton. Unfortunately, as Councillor Oates is absent, he will provide uh, a written answer ASAP. And I say, if Mr. Loxton has any follow-up questions, please do email me as his, as his ward councillor. Uh, item five, matters referred to uh, cabinet in accordance with overview uh, and scrutiny procedure rules. So we have a couple. Uh, so. The first item is regarding the uh, Gungate regeneration terms of reference. Yep, thank you. Um, so the Corporate Scrutiny Committee met on the 6th of October and reviewed the Gungate regeneration programme terms of reference. Uh, this is prior to Cabinet receiving this item uh, next month. So regarding that, we there was um, a recommendation that the to recommend to Cabinet that the Programme Board had a member of the Opposition on it, such member to be agreed by the two leaders of the Opposition groups. Um, this came about, just for a bit of background, because it had been agreed at the time by the previous leader. Um, and I understand you you don't necessarily have to make a decision on, on that today, you know the rules better than me, but it's just a preemptor for what you're, before you get the report in November. Okay, are there any questions from Cabinet members, any comments on that recommendation? No? No? Um, I say I'll happily thank the Chairman for bringing that recommendation to us. Um, the second recommendation, Market Street update. Yep, thank you. So this was from the same meeting. Um, we recommend to Cabinet that you instigate a focused review of the market strategy as a result of the changes in business conditions um, post-pandemic since uh, it went out to tender before the pandemic. Any questions or comments from cabinet members on that one? Um, I say, I, as a cabinet member, I'm happy to look at that, but I would um, think this is something that's definitely right up Scrutiny Street to work out and, and perhaps do a deep dive into that. So I would encourage the Scrutiny Committee to have a look at that as well, not just, uh, not just the executive. Uh, but again, thank you very much for that recommendation. There is a third recommendation regarding uh, net zero uh, carbon baseline. Um, there is a following report on that, so we'll bring in that uh, recommendation as part of that. So that takes us on to item uh, six, uh, net zero carbon. Uh, before we introduce the report, um, does the scrutiny chairman want to outline the recommendation from scrutiny? Th thanks, Mr. Chairman, yeah. Um, scrutiny um, considered the, the, the report that was put before us and it was uh, it was it was a very thorough report. Um, the the only thing that we we really noticed was that there was no um, time scale on the preparation for the action plan. So the the recommendation is that the action plan be prepared be prepared by the thirty first of December, twenty twenty four. Whilst that's not necessarily a, a an, an aggressive time scale, uh, I think committee thought that it was. Um, it needed to give um, give officers the opportunity to prepare a, a good action plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Andy, are you doing the report? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, nothing really to, to add to, to the report as written. Um, welcome scrutiny's recommendation on a, um, on, on a targeted deadline for it. Um, but tonight, Cabinet are being asked to... Um, to in endorse the, the baseline assessment um, and also endorse the fact that the action plan is uh, is now prepared, um, obviously subject to the um, the timeline suggested by by scrutiny. I think it's worth um, looking in in depth at the ether report that's attached as, uh, as as appendix one. It is exceptionally detailed. It's dived into all of the operations uh, the authority does. I think it's highlighted some areas where our, our big emissions are. Um, no sort of no surprise there. It's mainly around our big vehicular um, movements, which is going to be challenging to um, to, to, to 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 deal with. It's also um, our, our own 
energy consumption is one of the uh, the greater points, particularly around our housing stock. Um, the, the good news is uh, we're already engaged within the government decarbonisation programme for some of our housing stock to uh, to, to help reduce that. Um, and we, you know, I think taking um, necessary actions where we can. The the challenging point, um, and I think we need to acknowledge, will be um, resourcing this, um, both from a, you know, a financial position and uh, and, and everything else. Um, but apart from that, I welcome any questions on the, on the report that uh, that I can answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, that uh, uh, Mr. Barrett. So, just covering the scrutiny recommendation, I'm happy to move that uh, at the right point as, a, as an extra recommendation. So, uh, we take on board what scrutiny said. Um, and I, I say, just note, we've also had forwarded to as well from the MP uh, a letter about the, the next phase of the public sector decarbonisation scheme. So, I hope that's something that we can as well look at um, bidding for. So, at, at this point, are there any other questions or comments from cabinet members, Councillor Farrell? Uh, just happy to second your recommendation. Any more questions or comments from cabinet members? I, I do know this is one of the challenges of, uh, of our time um, and it's particularly uh, impactful. So uh, I'm happy to move those recommendations um, and say, second by, by Councillor Farrell, so all those in favour? That is carried, thank you very much. So we move to item seven, Council Housing Tenants Annual Report. Councillor Farrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, it's, uh, Excuse me, Councillor. Can we just hold a meeting while we just find some other seats for these people? Yeah, no, they're blocking the door. Why? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, this report deals with the routine reporting of the Council's annual performance to its tenants. Um, it's the 12th annual tenants uh, performance report that the Council has produced. The, uh, the report will go to November Cabinet in more detail and also receive a full assessment of the Council's preparedness for the Social Housing Regulation Bill, uh, which is going to take part, um, take place from April 2023. Um, it's a detailed report, just detailing the um, uh, the council uh, housing stock. Um, we do it in conjunction with the council's tenant consultative group, uh, and they continue as part of the regulatory framework to in, uh, influence, scrutinise, and inform policy decisions. So, um, it's a long report. Um, I'm very happy to take any questions, and I'd like to uh, move all those recommendations in the report on block. Thank you. Any questions or comments from cabinet members? No, I say very much welcome this report, particularly um, towards the end of the report, some of the uh, achievements and high performance um, and uh, sort of, should we say, the external peer um, comments on, on the performance of the, the housing sector. So that's particularly welcome. Um, so I'll happily second those recommendations then. So that's moved and seconded. All those in favour? That is carried. Um, so at this point, we move into um, confidential. Um, so I hereby move that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England Regulations 2012 and Section 100A.4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public are excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following business on the grounds that it likely um, 
well, sorry, <coughs> that it involves likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3, part 1, schedule 12A of the Act, and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing information to the public. And I hereby move. Is there a seconder? Uh, Councillor Farrell got there first. All those in favour? That is carried. And just to explain that to the public, so the two following reports um, are, have to be dealt with confidentially. So um, at this part of the meeting, the public have to leave. But we've never had an audience like this before for pretty much any meeting. So, you know, we guys are happy to have a hang around afterwards for a chat if you guys want to talk about anything. But for this part of the meeting, any present public have to leave the room, I'm afraid. <laughs>